Part One. Megan and Ken are deciding how they will spend the evening. You have some time to look at questions one to seven now. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hello, Megan speaking. Hello, Megan. Hello, Ken. I'm glad you called. Thomas asked me to give you his telephone number. Is that his office number or his home number? I can give you both. His new home number is nine four five two three four five six. Would you like his office number? I think I have it. Does nine seven three one four three two two sound right? That's it. But the home number is nine four five two three four five six. He moved in last week. Good, I've got that. Now, what would you like to do? Well, I'd like to go dancing, but Jane's hurt her ankle, so she'd rather not. That's a pity. I guess it means she doesn't want to play tennis either. That's right. She says it's okay to go bowling if we don't expect her to do well. Okay, let's do it. I guess we can go dancing some other time. Well, I booked us some time at the bowling alley of Entertainment City. Do you know it? Is it on Smith Street, down near the university? That's right. It's on the corner of Smith Street and Bridge Road. What time did you book for? The first booking I could get was eight o'clock. Okay, it's seven now. What do you want to do first? Well, I think we should leave now. We can meet at the bowling alley. I can't be that quick. I have to call Thomas to start with, and I need to get changed. Okay, I think I'll leave in ten minutes and meet you in there. That makes sense. I'll take my car, so I'll be quite quick. I'll be out of here in half an hour. Okay. You're so lucky to have a car. You can get around so easily. Well, yes, and no. I often spend ages driving around trying to find a park. The traffic can be very bad. Well, that won't be a problem for me because I'll take the bus. It goes right past my door, and I'll have plenty of time. Sounds good. Who else is coming? I think nearly everyone from the afternoon class will be there. Which class? The big maths class or the afternoon tutorial? The maths class. What's more, we get a concession for large numbers. That's good. I'm trying to keep my expenses down this month. So am I. I expect tonight will cost about twenty dollars. You must be good with money. I expect it to come to hmm, nearly forty dollars. So how are you going to manage that? Well, the bus is cheap, and if I come home early, I won't have time to spend too much. In any case, I have to be up early tomorrow morning, so I'd really better try to get home by about eleven. That reminds me, I have to phone the taxi company for my mother. Goodbye, Megan. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Ken. Ken calls the taxi company. First, look at questions eight and nine.
Thank you for calling Acme Cabs. Please follow the instructions on the tape. If you wish to order a cab now, press 1. If you have placed an order previously, press 2. If you wish to make an advance order, press 3. Please be ready to tell us your street number and name. If you wish to speak to the radio room supervisor, press 4. If you want to inquire about lost property, press 5. If you want to order a taxi equipped to carry wheelchairs, press 6. Your call is very important. Please stay on the line for the next available order taker. Hello. I think I left something in one of your cabs on Thursday. It was a brown paper package with an address written on it in green ink. Has anyone handed it in? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 2. You are going to hear a lecture given by a counselor. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi, I am your counsellor for this year. Today we will visit the facilities available to you on our campus. As students, you should take advantage of everything you have available to you. How many of you like sports? Well, I hope most of you do, because our school has great sports facilities. We have an indoor gym with state-of-the-art equipment. First, I want to tell you about our basketball facilities. There are two basketball courts. Both are full court and open for student use. We offer basketball leagues that all students are invited to join. Just sign up with a team. Usually there are games on the courts, but during league time only the teams are allowed to use the courts. The basketball courts are open 24 hours a day. If you want a job, you can be a referee at the games. Next, I want to tell you about the tennis facilities. We have five tennis courts available for student use. The tennis courts are open every day, 8 a.m. until 10 in the evening. You should call ahead to reserve a court because they are very popular and can often be booked weeks in advance. There are rackets and balls available for rent at the front desk of the courts. There is an Olympic-sized swimming pool that is open for students and the general public. There are also showers and locker rooms available. The swimming pool is open every day, 9 a.m. until 7 in the evening. There are openings for the position of lifeguards, so if you are looking for a job in the sun, this might be good for you. Now look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 16 to 20. There are also two weight rooms and a gymnastics room. The weight rooms have all the standard equipment available. Please check with the gym to see the open hours because they vary from time to time. The gymnastics room is usually not open for individual users because there are almost always classes held in the room. However, if you are interested, you may sign up for gymnastics classes. Plus, if you like martial arts and boxing, we offer classes for everyone, from beginners to advanced students. Please check the schedule for availability. There is everything available, from Chinese wushu to Brazilian wrestling. 
I will talk for a brief moment about our library system. Our campus has three libraries available to undergraduate students. One additional graduate library and one faculty library. The libraries are open daily until midnight except for during testing periods when the libraries will be open 24 hours. Please look on a map to see where the libraries are located. All students with a valid ID can check out books with a maximum of 10 books at a time. Books can be checked out for a two-week period and then renewed for one month maximum. After that, there is a $1 fine per week that the book is overdue. I will repeat that. There is a hefty $1 fine per week. So it is a good idea to return books on time. If you lose a book, then you will have to repay the library for it, plus a fine. If you damage a book, most likely you will have to repay the value of the book. So please, enjoy the library facilities, but take care of the school's belongings. The library is also equipped with 200 computers for student use. They are all internet ready and available for use. You must sign up at the library for one hour time slots. You may sign up for up to three consecutive slots at a time. No one can use the computers without first signing in at the library. That is it for now. Thank you for your attention. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a radio program in which the speakers discuss the importance of looking after old people in winter. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Now listen and answer the questions. Nobody likes cold weather, but for old people it can be particularly uncomfortable and dangerous. They can become cold without even noticing it. To keep warm, they may need help from friends and neighbors like you. To find out how we can help, we've invited a representative from the Social Service Department at the Town Hall to talk about the Winter Warmth Code campaign. Mr. Hastings, can I first ask you why it is so important to keep an eye on elderly people during cold weather such as we've been having lately? Yes. There are two main reasons. First, the old suffer from the cold more than the rest of us. They're not as active or strong as you and me, and it's harder for them to keep warm. This can lead to all sorts of complications. They have less resistance to infection. The quality of their lives is badly affected, and in extreme cases, they may need to be hospitalized. According to the newspapers, old people are actually dying of the cold. Is this true? I'm afraid it is. I said before there were two main reasons why we should keep an eye on old people. Well, the other major problem is that so many pensioners cannot afford to heat their homes properly. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. They may already be living in difficult circumstances. Then, in an exceptionally cold winter such as this one, they may just not have enough money to pay for the extra heating necessary. It seems terrible that in a society such as ours this should be happening. It is. And what the Winter Warmth Code campaign aims to do is to bring this problem to the attention not only of the government, but of everybody else in society. We all have a duty towards our old people to make sure that they do not suffer in this cold weather. So now to the practical side of things. What can we do to help? Well, we all know someone old, a relative maybe, a neighbor, someone living round the corner. We should adopt that person and make sure that we spare a few minutes every day to check that everything is okay. Make sure, even if the old person is not actually ill, that he or she is not suffering. Check when you go inside that the house or flat doesn't feel cold to you. It's a good idea to try to feel some part of their body, like their face or hands. Old people can become cold without even noticing it, you know. Okay, and if a person is too poor to afford to heat the house or flat? The best thing then is for the old person to live in one room only and to make sure that that one room is warm. Check that the bed is on an inside wall. Move it yourself if necessary. Check the room for drafts. A lot of cold air gets into the room through old windows or badly fitting doors. Is food important? Yes. Make sure that the old person is eating well. You could help by cooking for them or doing the shopping. Remember, a good hot meal a day makes a big difference. Also, make sure that they are well dressed. Old people need to wear more layers of clothes than we do, particularly at night. One last question, Mr. Hastings. Is there nothing the state can do to help? Oh, yes, indeed. Contact your town hall to find out about local organizations already involved in this kind of work. If there is a local Meals on Wheels service, for instance, you could get your adopted old person on the list. Then, of course, there are also many state benefits which an old person could be entitled to and which he or she doesn't know about, and which therefore he or she is not claiming. An extra problem here is that it can often be complicated, and old people don't like going to Social Security offices to fill in forms and all that. You can help by finding out for them what possibilities exist for claiming a little extra money from the government, then applying for it for them. That little extra could make all the difference. Yes, indeed. Well, Mr. Hastings, thank you for coming in and talking to us today. Thank you. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a conversation about using recorded delivery and registered post. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Tom, where are you going? To the post office. I'm going to send some packets to Leeds. Do you know the best way to send them? Well, if your need is for a record of posting and delivery rather than compensation for loss, recorded delivery is particularly suitable for sending documents and papers of little or no monetary value. Well, what can we send for recorded delivery? All kinds of inland postal packets except parcels, airway and railway letters and parcels. The service does not apply to mail for the Irish Republic. I see. How do I post them? You should get a certificate of posting form from the container in the post office and follow the instructions shown on the reverse. The certificate will be your record of posting. Can I send anything in the post? No, you can't. You must not send banknotes, currency notes and some valuable things because there is no special handling in the post. Recorded delivery mail is carried with the ordinary unregistered post and there is no special security treatment. How do we use recorded delivery? Well, when your letter or packet is delivered, it is signed for by the recipient and a record is kept by the post office. The post office does not undertake to deliver recorded delivery or any other mail to the addressee in person, but to the address shown. You can obtain confirmation of delivery by completing an advice of delivery form either at the time of posting or later. This form will be signed by a post office official, not by the addressee of the recipient. A fee is payable, which is lower if the form is handed in at the time of posting. Is there any compensation for loss? Well, compensation is limited. Compensation may be paid for loss or damage, but will not be paid for money or any other inadmissible item. If you want a speedy service for articles of value with extra security of handling en route and wish to have compensation in the event of loss or damage, you should use registered post. What can we send if we use registered post? Any first-class letter or packet except airway letter or railway letter. How do we post? I mean, what should we do? Well, you should make sure that the packet is made up in a strong cover and then it is fastened with wax, gum or other adhesive substance. Hand the packet to the post office counter clerk, together with the cost of postage and the registration fee. Do not post it in the posting box. Make sure that the fee paid is adequate to cover the value of the content. The counter clerk will give you a certificate of posting which he has initiated with the date stamped. Is there any special security for the registered post? Yes. All registered mail receives special security treatment. Packing is very important because registration is not in itself a safeguard against damage. The contents of registered packets must be adequately packed. How do we pack then? Do we have to use special envelopes? Yes, you have to send the articles in one of the registered letter envelopes sold by the post office. These envelopes are already stamped for first-class postage and have the minimum registration fee. What about the compensation? Compensation will not be paid for the following articles, such as banknotes, currency notes, trading stamps, coupons and some valuable things unless they are enclosed in one of the registered letter envelopes sold by the post office. I see. How does it deliver? The recipient on delivery signs for your registered mail. The post office does not undertake to deliver registered or any other mail to the addressee in person, but to the address shown. You can obtain confirmation of delivery by paying an additional fee and completing an advice of delivery form, either at the time of posting or later. If you require the recipient's signature on the advice of delivery, the form must be handed in at the time of posting, otherwise a post office official will sign the certificate. The advice of delivery fee is lower if the form is handed in at the time of posting. Thank you very much for all this useful information. That is the end of part 4.